space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds, to discover new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Hell yeah. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to Star Trek 25th Anniversary. I'm excited. I'm very excited for this. Demon World. Though the Enterprise's primary mission is peaceful exploration, the galaxy holds many surprises. To be prepared, we are conducting a mock battle with the USS Republic. Captain Patterson reports the Republic is in position and ready to begin. The way Kirk The Republic is arming weapons and raising shields. I suggest we do the same. Oh. So we're thrown straight into a battle without any instructions. Press S and W to raise shields and arm weapons. Okay. So here's our target, USS Republic. Which you can see on the little reticle down there, the little radar map in between Sulu and Chekhov. Come on. There we go. I used to really suck at these battles as a kid. Come on, come on. Yep, dam damage control. Pressing D. Let's get Scotty to look after his engines. Oh, those bridge noises, though. I would sleep to this. Like, um... How people sleep with the sounds of nature, I would sleep to that bridge, bridge sequence right there. Nah, missed. Just missed. Oh, direct hit. Whoops. So used to WSAD, I just went to move the ship with the D key. Engines repaired, Captain. Good work, Scotty. How about we get those shields back online? Aye, sir. As you can see on the left and right hand sides, that's um, the Enterprise's status. So little red bits of damage. The yellow lines around the ship are the shields, but we can also switch. Target analysis. Oh. So that's what that's what the Republic's in. She's in a state. We have got this, I think. Oh, we've only got one torpedo tube. The Republic is it's all good. Captain. Captain Patterson extends his congratulations, sir. Lowering shields and disarming weapons. Damn right, congratulations. Yes, coming in from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. Jim, the Enterprise is ordered to travel to Pollux 5. The natives report that alien life forms have been attacking the settlers near a mine at Mount Idol. You are to report to the High Prelate of the Colony. The settlers are members of the Acolytes of the Stars sect. The description of the attackers vary but all say that the attackers resemble creatures from many Earth religions known as demons. Demons? Starfleet wants you to determine the nature of these creatures and to resolve the situation without bringing harm to the colonists. Starfleet out. Fair enough. Alright, now we get into our copy protection. So as you can see here, here's the map of the sector. So each one of these little stars is a system we can go to. As part of the copy protection, um, in the manual is actually a map with the list of what, which systems are what. So you couldn't really play it without the map. Luckily, I've got the map right here. So, this one is Pollux. We have arrived at Pollux 5. The music we're using there is actually an MT32 music. I've got a little emulator running, so that's pretty good. Um, orbit. Press O. Get our orbit. Standard orbit. Awesome. 
All right, now we just proceed to beam down. Spark, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. Scotty's got the con. Oh. Except that red shirt doesn't get in any trouble. I'd be nervous if I was him though. All right, and here we are on Pollux 5. This is so much better, gentlefolk. We are honored at your presence and hope you will find peace here in our haven. Thank you. Okay, so... Yeah, the floor on this planet is very interesting. I wonder how useful it may be for medicinal purposes. No. Okay. Bones, we'll figure it out. So we right click here, gives us this little menu. So this is an adventure game. So this reticle here is just walk, basically. Uh, we've got examine, talk to, use, and pick up. So start off by talking with a bloke here greeting us. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. We have received word that alien life forms are creating problems at your mining facilities at Idle Mountain. Tell me more. So we have dialogue choices. We can actually... So this is actually the good... Um, the good dialogue tree. Then we've got the not so good. Most high prelate and given. Oh. I am honored to meet you. I consider it my divine duty to assist you in any possible way with the spawn of the devil. So that we got overly good, but then we can just be a straight up dick to them. Been seeing ghosts and boogeymen, eh? I find that a little hard to believe. Oh, voice acting is pretty good. Okay. I'm Captain James T. Kirk. Certainly, Captain Kirk. Not aliens per se. We have encountered what we believe are demons at Idle Mountain. Creatures surely emerging from the very gates of hell. Our god would not test us thus without reason. So we believe your might and insight for our god's method to help us discover what is going on. Aside from seeing demons, has any hard data been collected? Any evidence I could see? Demons, gates of hell, this is the 23rd century. <laughs> That's the Aside from seeing we'll demons, has any... A skeptic would consider everything merely anecdotal or unproven. My people will gladly tell you their own stories, so you need not hear it secondhand through me. What can you tell me about the mine itself? Okay. You're wasting the time of a starship capable of destroying this planet with <laughs> campfire stories? No wonder you were dumped out here in the middle of nowhere. Wow. Okay, that's that's like the Mirrorverse. What can you tell me about the mine itself? Mirrorverse option there. We'll just go, we'll ask the question. The area is exceptionally stable tectonically. And easy for our machine. Fact, Kirk's not even looking at him. We've mined for hafnium and a variety of useful trace elements. The deeper we dig, however, the more anomalous the variety of minerals seems to be. Our Ignatiate brother Stephen has his own theories about why this might be. Either way, the anomalies inspired Brother Canbury to conduct studies inside the mine. Yesterday, he reported discovering a strange door. A gate to hell, surely. For the demons caused a cave-in immediately. Canbury was trapped, unconscious, and the demons prevent us from rescuing him. Oh. We can only hope he is still alive. Thank you for your courtesy, Kirk. May you receive the guidance and protection of our God as you complete this divine mission. All right, so we're gonna figure out what these demons are. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, subtitles on just in case I decide to talk over. Okay, uh, let's have a look around. On the other side of the trees is Idle Mountain, a tall, forbidding place. You have a vague feeling of danger. Hmm. What's this sign say? All mining equipment use this road. Okay. What's this? Building? A quickly constructed Spartan shelter, primarily used by fledgling colonies. Hmm. Oh, this is our inventory up here, by the way, so we can examine our stuff. We've got our phaser, which we can use on stun or kill. We've got Spock's tricorder, Bones tricorder, communicator, and a med kit at this stage. Let's um, let's go in here. Maybe we can get get some more information about what the hell's going on here. Oh, I wish I could turn up that walking speed. Ah, oh, like a lab of some kind. What's this? An antiquated molecular synthesizer sits in a corner. Okay. What's this? An old-fashioned computer. It appears to have some type of simulation running. It is old fashioned. It's got a little CRT monitor there. A multi purpose workspace with fine, well worn tools and equipment close at hand. Okay, and cabinet? A glass fronted display of mineral specimens, including a meteorite, a few fossil shells, the skull of a cat sized alien animal, and a very encrusted twist of metal. 
A twist of metal is what we're interested in. But I think we got we I think we have to do something before we can grab that. This is our red shirt right here. Can we look at him? Ensign Everts finds himself fascinated by the acolytes and their planet. Let's just hope he doesn't get into any trouble. Assorted pieces of glass rest on this table from ancient beakers to double burners. Okay. Let's go in the other place first. I don't think we can do anything in here yet. Oh, he's gone. We can also talk to the crew as well. You look rather cold, Bonds. I'm not cold. I'm freezing. And that damn transporter just had to set me down in the middle of a snow drift. Oh, that's so good. A centimeter of snow does not technically constitute a drift, Doctor. <laughs> and doctors say that patients complain too much. Well, it's DeForest Kelly actually playing McCoy. Oh, we got an injured guy here. You'll understand if I don't stand up, I hope. I am not well. What happened to you, mate? This man is in no condition to talk. Fair enough. Can anyone else tell me what happened to you? What about, what about you, sir? You look important. He is too busy consoling the wounded man. Okay. Uh, you, sir? I am worried about Brother Chubb. Can you examine him, doctor? Of course we can. So, we will use bones on the man. Jim, this man has suffered severe physical injuries to his head and arm. The wounds have been adequately cared for. However, he has developed a new Garion infection. Ugh. If not treated swiftly, the effects can be fatal. The infection can normally be treated with hypodytoxin, but there's none on the Enterprise. I may be of some assistance. The Lorexian berry grows near the mouth of the cave. If I could acquire it, I would be able to synthesize the hypodytoxin from the berry. Unfortunately, the demons prevent us from approaching the cave entrance. Perhaps you could retrieve it for me. Okay. Let's go. I certainly see nothing there. Okay. No worries. All right, let's go um, sh show these demons what for. So I'm guessing the cave's that way through the forest. Oh. <gasps> Klingons. Gotta be quick with this. I don't want anything to happen to Reverend. I I do not want to lose a red shirt this whole playthrough. So let's let's do that. If I lose a red shirt at the end of the playthrough, I have to take a shot. Yeah, boy. We see a small explosion, and the Klingon's hand falls to the ground with a dull thud. Quick shot, Jim Kirk. Like they used to, sir. No, and they don't make red shirts like they used to either. So be careful. I don't want to have to have a shot at the end of this. Okay. Let's have a look at this. You take the Klingon's detached hand. Klingon. Captain, oh. we registered phaser fire and an unknown energy beam. Is everyone okay? We're fine. Did you register any disruptor fire? No, Captain. Why? Are there Klingons down there? No, just an idea, Kirk out. Fascinating. I begin to suspect that we have stumbled upon something that the colonists would never have uncovered. What is it, Spock? I wish to gather further data before making a definite conclusion, Captain. Okay. Well, can we use the tricorder on the... This is not a Klingon, Captain. Not a real one. It is an organic construct, an android-like robot. It looks like a Klingon, but the appearance is entirely superficial. Hmm. Okay, so... Looks like whatever's controlling these androids makes them look like whatever we fear. So the colonists and the demons and the Klingons with us. Captain, I detect a recent avalanche approximately 6.2 kilometers away that occurred within the last three days. The mountain may be quite dangerous. Demons, Klingons, avalanches. What's next? The wicked witch of the West? <laughs> that is not logical, Doctor. It wasn't supposed to be logical, you green blood. Gentlemen, Boston. gentlemen. Why does everything have to be so damn logical? <laughs> so, so frustrated with him. Alright, so where are these berries? Here they are. We'll take some berries. May as well suss out the cave while we're here. You have retrieved a sample of berries. Ooh, 
I love the music. All right. A large pile of rubble blocks what appears to be a large metallic structure. That must be the gateway they were talking about. Let's get Spock to scan. One Starfleet issue sign. Whoops. Captain, there are several weak points in the cabin's structure. Careful use of our phasers from the top down should be able to clear it. Right. So, um, Spock and the crew can give you little hints like that. So it's often good to talk to them if you're in a situation. Let's do it. Assume firing positions. Top down. Whoa, it's the bones. It was a near thing, but he'll live. Ah, oh, nice. So he's been trapped under there for God knows how long. Oh, thank you, kind souls, for saving my life. Let me rest here for a little before returning to report this miracle to Prelate Angiven. No worries, mate. Let's uh, have a scan of this. Fascinating, Captain. This door is made of an unknown material. It is clearly built by an alien race we have no knowledge of. Okay. That noise happen whenever I write. Yeah, so that little noise happens when I bring up the menu. That's alright. Wasn't sure if my computer was making some weird noises. All good. All right. Well, that was a success. Let's save the other colonists now. All right. Uh, can I just give you the berries? Nothing happens. Are you, Brother Stephen? Good! Yes. You have found the berries. Uh, bring them to my lab, quickly. I mean, you could just grab them if you're going there anyway. But alright. Okay. Brought the berries. Don't know how you got in here ahead of us, but alright. The settings on the Ardak floor have already been adjusted. Uh, simply place the berry in the machine and the hypoditoxin will be synthesized. Okay, sounds good. The machine synthesizes a quantity of hypoditoxin. We've got to get this to Brother Chubb as quickly as possible, Jim. Alright, let's do it. This is a really great game. The sequel Judgment Rights too, which we're going to get to. Okay. Uh, Hypoditoxin. Thank you. You're most kind. Okay, so, can you talk to me? I headed up the party that sought to rescue Brother Candry. Without warning, the demons appeared and attacked us as we approached the mine. Can you tell us what they looked like? Like the demons that have plagued devout folk since before our people left the earth. Huge, muscular demons with ruddy skin. Truly the manifestation of evil. With bat wings, horns and talons and a pointed tail. God preserve us all. One tore open my arm and I surely would have perished. But for my companions who bore me back down the mountain. The demons didn't follow you? No. Hmm. I am Brother Stephen. An Ignatiate following the holy teachings with mind and soul alike. I believe the anomalous mineral readings in combination with evidence of ancient disturbances in this otherwise highly stable geologic location indicates previous habitation of the region eons ago. Why, Spock, you two should get along fine. He sounds just like you. <laughs> well, take I would be equally honored to discuss medicine with you, Doctor, and science with your Vulcan associate. And let me continue. I believe our god made humans, aliens, and demons all. If I could get a real demon into my study, I would bless our god for the opportunity, as I thank him for everything in this life. 
You tread close to unholy knowledge, Brother Stephen. Hmm. I appreciate your prayers, Brother Roberts. Uh, Captain, if you and your people go up the mountain, I hope afterward you will visit me in my study, which is next door. I'm too old to make the trek myself, but I'm eager for knowledge. In return, I will offer you what insights our God grants these old eyes. Okay, sounds reasonable. I am Brother Grisnash. I went up the mountainside in solitary prayer, seeking to face my fears. Indeed, mm -hmm. I found them. A bellowing Krognik demon with sharp teeth and a long snout descended upon me in a rush of wind. Captain, the Krognik demon has a decidedly wolfish appearance. Brother Grisnash, is this not the traditional shape of the evil oh, he's a Tellerite. among Tellerites? It is. I believe this may be significant, Captain. Yep, it's all making sense, isn't it? Alright, can we go back to his lab now? Okay, so let's have a look in this cabinet. A glass fronted display of mineral specimens, including a meteorite, a few fossil shells, the skull of a cat sized alien animal, and a very encrusted twist of metal. Okay, let's see if we can. You are interested in my little yes, museum of curiosities? Looks like a pile of junk if you ask me. <laughs> yes, tell us about these things. I enjoy talking about these treasures. Shall I go into mineral specimens? Let's just ask him about everything. True curiosities, nothing more. I think they're very pretty, don't you? Okay. Shall I go into mineral specimens? Nope. Meteorite. Yeah, let's have a look. Tell me about the meteorite. I believe this is evidence of the cataclysm which destroyed the moon of Pollux 5 eons past. I've constructed a theoretical model based on analysis of the planet's rings of what things might have been like. I think that the moon, like Earth's moon, would have made a total eclipse of the sun possible. I would have liked to have seen that. For conditions making a perfect total eclipse are rare in the universe. Our God creates great wonders. Shall I go hmm. into mineral specimens? Fossil shells. Yep. Tell me about the fossil shells. One of the oldest forms I've seen on this planet. Our God makes beautiful things indeed. Shall I go into I've got a feeling. mineral specimen? Meteorite. Fossil skull of a small alien animal. Alright. I wonder if this is... Mm. I've got a feeling there's only one thing that's of interest in here, but we'll go through everything now. The skull of a modern Silati. The Salati. largest creature native to this planet. Yeah, about the size of a house cat from Earth. Salatis combine a rather insectoid pattern with four-legged reptilian form, including praying mantis-like forelimbs. Whoa. Shall I go into mineral specimen, or would you rather twist of metal? Twist of metal. This chunk of rock is a greatly weathered example of a vanadium tungsten alloy, which doesn't occur naturally. <coughs> it is my best evidence that the area was previously inhabited. Mm. Shall I go into okay. mineral specimen, or would you rather... Very well. I can't imagine why, but if you have a further interest in any of this, take what you like. But please remember to return my treasures when you're done with them. Okay, so... I wonder if I can take more than one thing. I've got, I've got a feeling I've got to take the skull. So, I'll take a twist of metal. Okay. Okay. Can I take... Alright. Let's take those two things. Alright, now let's go up to the mountain. This is all coming back to me. Now, we've got to think. I think we have to talk to Spock. I recommend as thorough. Uh, yep. No, I reckon we use Spock here. Sir, it may be dangerous. Let me try it. Oh no! 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 Dude! Dude! I think I was shocked, sir. Fascinating. <laughs> I'm registering low intensity shielding, unlike anything we've encountered before. That kept this door and whatever is behind it. 
hidden from the ship's sensors and earlier tricorder readings. Okay. Okay. Um, do we use the hand on it? The fit is perfect, but something seems to be shorting out. Okay, now I think we use Spock. Nothing happens. I failed to see. No, something seems to be shorting out. Hmm. Tricorder? Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, huh? Nothing happens. Hmm. Interesting. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing Something happened. seems to be shorting out. Okay. Interesting. Ah, uh, I know. I uh, I know. Okay. There's a workbench in that lab. Workbench in the lab. Might be able to fix the hand. Okay, so... Let's Spock, see what you can do about that hand. There we go. This machinery is delicate, but I have managed to repair the circuitry. Nice. Okay. Now it should open. Circuitry triggers a connection and the door opens. All right, let's go deeper. Ooh, do, 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 do. I remember this puzzle. Oh, God. It looks like a control panel with slide switches. Slide switches. Okay. It looks like a yes, control panel. Yes, yes. Let's get Spock to. Scanner. This alien construction takes readings of mental activity. It also activates manufacturing equipment related to security and includes a short distance transportation device. So this is what's been producing the demons. Alright, now... Oh god, I remember this. Okay, um... So gold up fully, red halfway. Whoops. Yeah. Blue quarter down. Nothing happens. Oh, God damn it. Let's try that. Nothing happens. Hmm. This is the hint here. So I wonder if it's all the way off. Halfway. Halfway quarter. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I have no idea. Oh. Oh, hey. That works. I don't know. Not quite Thank sure you why. For repairing our Somnambutron. Stop. You're trespassing okay. on Federation territory. No worries. So this is these are the aliens that I'm 
I was talking about. I welcome you on behalf of the United Federation of Planets. Who are you? Where you come from? What's choice three? We did fix your machine. Can we write the repair bill off against rent on this land? Oh, God. Stop. Go I welcome two. you on behalf of the United Federation of Planets. Who are you? Where you come from? We call ourselves Nowians. Thousands of years ago, we saw that meteor impacts were going to cause an ice age. We created this huge underground shelter to preserve our race, keeping us in suspended animation until the planet had recovered. We programmed the machinery to revive us at the next eclipse, but we did not count on the destruction of our moon. Some advanced civilization. <laughs> Perhaps you can tell us about the demons. Yeah, tell us about the demons. The demons, as you call them, are created by a machine designed to keep intruders away from our sleep chambers. It pulls from the minds of any approaching creature their most feared enemy and produces replicas to scare them away. For you and your crew, it was Klingons. For the Tannerites, a wolf demon. And for the other humans, a demon from their religion. On behalf of my people, thank you for waking us. I will turn off the machinery which creates our guardians, so that they no longer bedevil those with whom we now share our home. Oh, woe! Alas! The key is missing. I can do nothing. Even we will suffer the attacks of our own guardians unless the key can be found. I implore you, if you can help, please do so. Okay, so... Jim, think about that skull we picked up from Brother Stephen. Now look at this alien. See the resemblance? Mm -hmm. It's a bit bigger than a house cat, though. Let's give it to him. A child? No, I see many differences. This must be what our people who did not slumber have become. All right. Still, I would like to see these remains properly interred according to the precepts of our religion. May I keep this? Of course you can. Of course. I think you will get along well with the Pollux inhabitants. And I'm sure you will have interesting theological discussions. There you go. You can take that, mate. Now, the key is that little twist of metal that we picked up. Let's give it to him. You found the key. I can now turn off the machinery creating our guardians, and no more sentience shall be at risk. Surely the Holy One smiles upon us all. I have no way to thank you, Captain. But please carry this request from my people to yours. We have much ancient knowledge we can share, and we would like to join your Federation. Go in peace. They're very I friendly people. I will be glad people. to accept your application to the Federation. We shall have a diplomatic envoy sent to make the final arrangements. We look forward to meeting them. We also look forward to having discourse with the colonists. Farewell. May the Holy One bless you. Live long and prosper. Kirk to Enterprise. Beam us up, Mr. Scott. All right, our work here is done. I didn't lose the red shirt. Okay. Message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the problems at Pollux 5 and evaluated your performance at 100%. Yes. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. So, I might have known there weren't any demons. We all have demons of our own bones. The ones we can't confront are often the hardest to deal with. These demons were based on fear, Captain. A human failing. I don't know, Spock. Everything that I've ever read about demons describes them as having pointy ears. Hmm. On to the next episode. So you get a score at the end and commendation points, which don't mean much. It's just how well you did. Hijacked. Hijacked, right? Let's go straight into it. Starfleet, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. The USS Enterprise is to report immediately to Beta Miamid. The USS Masada has failed to report as scheduled. Determine nature of delay and take whatever measures are necessary. Set course for Beta Miami, sir. All right. Ship in distress. I think we're going to do this one next time, actually. Thanks for joining me. I'm very excited to be playing this. Um, you're going to get a lot of more regular updates from me. 
a lot of regular uploads. Um, I've set aside time to do some videos, so it's going to be really good. Alright, catch you in the next one.